Shout out to G-Man Boxing. Where's the piss bottle? It's over there. All right, people. Dylan White scores a 12-round majority, majority decision win over Jermaine Franklin. Now, <clears throat> this was a fight that... I definitely didn't expect this type of fight, put it like that. I looked at Jermaine Franklin... Obviously, I watched a couple of his fights going into this, and I didn't really see much to indicate that he would cause Dylan White as much problems as he did. Let's talk about the score. It was a majority decision. The 115-115 scorecard, no issue with that. The 116-112 scorecard, twice, I do have an issue with that. There's no way Dylan White won eight rounds in this fight. It was a close fight, certainly. Could have went either way. Personally... I felt Jermaine Franklin just did enough to nick this fight. Just felt he outworked Dylan White. I certainly couldn't find eight rounds to give to him. I don't know what those judges were. You know, I was actually, I was on Element. In the boxing group on Hatman's Element. And we were talking about this fight throughout the whole way through. And towards the end I said, if this fight goes 12 rounds, you know there's going to be a scorecard that's going to go to Dylan White. And it's going to be too generous. And he'll probably end up winning. And me, Hatman, people like that boxing the edge, we were all in agreement that this was going to happen. Now, it, it is annoying, you know, that in a close fight, because, you know, people will always say scoring is subjective. You know, that's what we always hear from promoters, the British Boxing Board of Control, when they, they always say, well, it's subjective. Well, I could understand that. And, you know, they say, like, oh, it's open to interpretation. It's like, I would understand that completely. If it wasn't the fact that the A side always gets the nod. Like, nine, like, if something is subjective, right? So if you look at a fight, if you have two judges and one likes um, just aggression and clean punching and the other likes work rate, then you would imagine that in a round where this guy landed three, three clean shots, one judge will say, I'll give him the round. And the other judge, you know, would give the guy who landed more but not... The telling shots. You'd imagine that one would give it to him, one would give it to him. It's not like that. It's not subjective at all. Because if it was subjective, you'd see a greater dis disparency or discrepancy, I should say, between you know this guy winning and this guy winning. But it's never like that. We always see the A side win. And at the end of the day, look, I'm not saying this was a robbery. I thought this was a close fight. I don't have an issue with Dylan White winning. But I have an issue with the 116-112 scorecard. I don't think that was right. And, you know, I think it kind of... You know, I remember when Callum Smith, and it's not just Eddie Earn, it's across the board in boxing, but I remember when Callum Smith fought John Ryder, and I thought John Ryder won that, and I remember at the time saying to my friend, he was watching this as well with me, I was like, you know they're going to give it to Callum Smith, and they're going to give it to him wide, and he, this was about the 10th round, and he was like, I know, yeah, but it's nice to watch, and it's like, that shouldn't be happening really, should it? When we're watching the fight and we can see it's close, it's even. One guy is is doing that a little bit more and it's like, you know, I'm not going to give it to him, don't you? Oh, yeah. It's kind of like, that shouldn't be. Let's talk about this fight, though. Now, Franklin... You know, when I was watching the clips of Franklin going into this preview, <clears throat> I did notice that he has decent hand speed and not bad foot speed. Now, he was lighter in those um, videos I seen him. That was 2019, Jermaine Franklin. He was a lot lighter back then. Now, he was only about... He was about roughly 15, 20 pounds heavier in this fight than he was back in 2019, but still too heavy in my opinion. I was looking at him and thinking, do you know what? If he could come in 230s, he might be useful. Because he's decent hand speed. Pierce has taken a shot quite well. And, you know, he's good at switching up the head and body. Throws decent combinations. Doesn't seem to be a bad counter puncher either. So I was looking at Franklin, I was saying, actually, do you know what? Now you see him reel up, he's actually got a bit of potential. There's a bit of potential there with Jermaine Franklin. With Dylan White, Dylan White was using his jab a lot more, which he's training with Buddy McGurk, so he tends to have his fighters jab a lot. But I thought Dylan White looked very slow in there. He was really, it was bizarre almost, like that bizarre, but it seemed like that tenacity from Dylan White that we saw in fights like Joseph Parker, Derek Chisora was, was lacking. You know, he wasn't able to go through the gears. He seemed so one-paced and so slow in there. Even the work he was doing that was good, it just seemed very, almost forced in a way. Which is a sign that normally a fighter is kind of on the decline. It's starting to show, show signs of shop-worn. 
And that's kind of how it looked in there. You know, I was always wondering going into this fight because I said, like, I don't know if Dylan White's ability is tanked. I think it's just his punt resistance. But looking at this fight, he did not look good. I thought that he allowed Franklin to outwork him a lot in there. I thought that when Dylan White did decide to invest in Franklin's body, he was having some success. But that was it. It was kind of few and far between, you know. He was he just didn't seem sharp in there at all tonight. Now saying that, he did win some rounds. He did definitely won the last round. He buzzed Franklin the last round. But he was buzzed himself in there towards the back of the ninth round. Jermaine Franklin landed a right hand on Dylan White. And it was lucky, very lucky, it was in the last 10 seconds of the round. Because for me, Dylan White's legs did a little did a little jitter. And, you know, he was definitely buzzed by that. Franklin was doing actually very well in this fight. Going, switching up the head and body. He was obviously looking at Tyson Fury and Pavek. And he was trying to land some uppercuts now and again. And he did have a little bit of success with the uppercut. A little bit. It wasn't going through fully the whole time. But Dylan White's uppercut was actually pretty good in this fight. But... Yeah, for the most part, I just felt that Jermaine Franklin was just doing that. It was that little bit busier in the rounds. You know, Dylan White, whilst he was doing some good work with his jab, I think that he was, well, he was definitely 100% low, very low with some of them, with some of the shots. Jermaine Franklin didn't really complain, but I felt the referee, the referee was looking down because I was looking at the referee in this fight. He didn't do a great job now, I have to say, the referee. I didn't, John Latham. Not a referee I'd be very familiar with, but he didn't do a great job, in my opinion. And, you know, he, he could see those. He was even looking down and never... I don't even think I saw him warn Dylan White once. Or if he did, it was later on in the fight. And a lot of them shots were low. Low, low. Now, Franklin, to his credit, never complained at it and just kept on swinging. But this, this Dylan White right here, who is likely going to go on to face Anthony Joshua next, I would go as far as saying it's the perfect opponent for Joshua to come back against. Because he is going to look devastating against Dylan White. Because I think Dylan White really... This fight right here, it really showed me how far he slid over the last few years. Because I kind of thought, okay, look, against Tyson Fury, Fury just was better in every single department. And Dylan White's punch resistance isn't the best. But against someone like Franklin, who doesn't look amazing, has a bit of talent there, but you know, is not in shape... You know, all that things. You know, don't know how good his chin is, etc. Yeah, Dylan White will probably, you know, he'll show that the ability is still there. Well, I don't think it is, truth be told. I think that's on the way out as well. I mean, he really did look as slow as molasses in there. He really, really did. Didn't look fluid at all. I just thought that that was a very poor performance. And I thought Franklin just outworked him and just nicked it. Just nicked it. A very close fight. That's what I will say. People straight away are saying robbery. I, don't, I wouldn't go as far as saying robbery, no. I felt that Jermaine Franklin won it. If you had it a draw, fine. If you had it, let's say, like 115, 113, 115, 114, white, no issues. But to give him eight rounds, and that's what I was saying. Like, you know, I've said this for a while now, that when people say, oh, boxing's subjective. Well, if it was subjective, why does it always go the way of the house fire? You know, always goes the way of the house fire. Without fail almost, it goes the way of the house fire. If it's subjective, wouldn't it be different? Wouldn't it be kind of like, oh, well, you know, subjective, so we gave it to that guy, so he's got the biggest win. No, it's always the house fire. <laughs> you know, make it out what you will. And it's not just Eddie Hearns. We're going to say, it's, it's Eddie Hearns. Eddie Hearns. It's happened on Frank Warren, PBC, Golden Boy, etc., etc., etc. Spain, I mean, look at some of the shows over there. What goes on in some of the shows and the referees and everything, even the doctors. That, that Spain is one of the worst. I, I've I'll never forget when it was a Jez Smith fought Leharaga. I mean that was disgraceful. The way the referees were behaving over there, crazy. But that was the fight in a nutshell. So Dylan White gets the win. Jermaine Franklin, if he can get himself into shape, could have something there. Could potentially have something there. In terms of Dylan White, as I said, yeah, I, I don't see AJ. AJ's not going to be losing sleep at the prospect of fighting Dylan White again. I can not I can say that. So, nice comeback opponent. That's going to set him up well for the future, in, in my opinion. I think he's going to get a nice knockout win. Probably the way, the way people envisioned the fight in 2015 w would have went before they actually fought. You know, people were saying AJ early, this, that, and the other. I think that's how it's going to go in 2023. I think that's how it's going to go. 
early by age. I can't see him losing sleep over this. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section. How did you score this fight? What did you think of it? Yeah, let me know. I know David Hay had the fight a draw. He gave a lot of even rounds, to be fair. Dylan White in the 10th and the 11th actually did do a pretty good job in those rounds. I gave him those rounds. But, yeah, definitely not eight rounds. Definitely not. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Hope you enjoyed the video, people. Smash the like button if you could. Hit subscribe, of course, if you haven't already. We'll do a live tomorrow. I didn't... I did... I had the John Ryder fight on. I know he won. But I have to go and sit down and have a look at it. Because I know he won via injury. Because Zach Parker appeared to injure his hand. I haven't gone and seen it. I'll have a watch of it now as soon as we finish up here. And, yeah, I'll let you know my thoughts on that. For now, lads and lassies, I'll leave you with that. I hope you enjoy it, people. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I'll talk to you people. Smash the like button on the way out. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Peace.